Almost Ashnaps, 13 Women Who Dared to Dream by Tanya Lee Stone. Looking for inspiration? Are you looking for a book to inspire you? Is something holding you back from reaching a goal? If a book about going against the odds is what you need, you are in the right place. Have you ever dreamed of doing something that others thought you couldn't do? The Mercury 13 women knew exactly what it was like to be underestimated. These women looked to defy the odds and do something that had not yet been done, be the first women in space. Almost Astronauts, 13 Women Who Dare to Dream is written by Tanya Lee Stone and published in 2009. It won the Robert F. Sibbert Medal and the intended grade level is 6th grade through 8th grade. Women have dreams just like any natural human on the Earth, except these women dreamt of leaving Earth and flying off to space. The women in this nonfiction book show their perseverance and determination to both set a high goal and do whatever it takes to reach it. Randy Lovelace was the chairman of NASA's Life Sciences Committee. He was a realist who looked at women as being capable and was a driving force for getting women tested to go to space and the Women in Space program. Tanya Lee Stone writes of Lovelace saying, he was going to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt, not just that they were up to the job, but they were more than up to the job, and he believed that they were. Jerry Cobb, a woman who was the first. Jerry Cobb was the first woman to undergo and pass the Mercury astronaut test. With her countless hours spent in the air, she had already had more flying experience than needed. She surpassed the men throughout her results and tests, however, NASA was not convinced. Jerry Cobb was the first to have blood tests, x-rays, freezing water injected into her ears, and several other tests that each male astronaut also went through, including the tank and facing the mastiff. Jerry Cobb became an inspiration for many women, and through Cobb's notable work, women began writing to Lovelace to begin their testing. Women began to take their dream of flight to a new extreme of her dream of space flight. Tests began for an additional 18 women to narrow down the number to 13. The women went through phase one of testing as Jerry Cobb had previously completed. They were examined and put to the test through rigorous challenges involving their stamina, heart rate, and blood pressure. Stone is quoted in the text as saying, if women were going to prove that they could equal the best of men, the chosen Mercury 7, they would have to show not only that they were as tough or tougher, but that they could do it with a smile, never stepping out of the role of their polite, cooperative lady. This leads to asking, what is a woman, woman capable of? The woman experienced delays and backlash throughout the process of testing and reaching the incredible height of spaceflight. Their continued determination pushed them to fight back and prove their capabilities, whether that meant they had to stand up and give a speech to all those who looked down on them, or simply prove the results of their testing fairness. The women understood that their dream of going to space would be a challenge, but they expected a fair fight. Jerry Cobb went toe-to-toe -to -toe with NASA and wrote letters to the government to make her case. One woman wrote a letter to Vice President Johnson saying, we want to do something more important than drink tea, play bridge, and sit on the sidelines where there are vital things that we could do. Jerry Cobb had the chance to prove that women deserved to go to space at the congressional hearings in 1962. She represented each woman of Mercury 13 and noted each and every result of their testing along with their immense capabilities. However, Jackie Cochran had her own opinion. Jackie Cochran played a large role in the continuation of the Mercury 13 women in their journey to space. She felt she needed to be a vital part in the role and that Jerry Cobbs was not in control, nor should she be. Jackie Cochran did not want Jerry Cobbs to be viewed as a leader, but instead thought that she herself should be. Cochrane didn't necessarily disagree with the Mercury 13 women, yet she preferred that if testing in their dream of spaceflight would be continued, that she would be in charge. The Mercury 13 women had not been given the opportunity they so longed for. Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman to fly into space in 1963, had come from Russia. They had beaten the U.S. to this amazing accomplishment. The text points out, the problem was that they were the wrong sex and it was the wrong time. They were not able to change the social order. Not right away, that is. An astronaut, Scott Carpenter, is quoted as saying, NASA never had any intention of putting those women in space. Until that is, Sally Ride. Sally Ride was the first American woman in space in 1983 as a mission specialist on the Challenger. 
the 13 women who made a difference. The 13 Mercury women may have not made it to space, however, they paved the way for women to realize their potentials. These 13 women created a pathway for women to follow. Whether the women shared a dream of spaceflight or not, these 13 women showed that women were capable of more than is expected of them. Overall, this book has provided me with a new perspective about dreaming. I feel this book is highly relevant to all students and beneficial to keep in the classroom. It is a good resource and could be referenced for many different areas of study in the classroom. Everyone has a dream at some point and everyone can experience setbacks. For this reason, I feel that this book could be perfect for students who need that extra push to accomplish their goals. In addition, students who enjoy nonfiction may enjoy this because it is not traditional to many other nonfiction books. Also, students interested in biographies will be able to put, pick this book up and not want to put it down. Almost astronauts, 13 women who dared to dream.